All right. Welcome to a discussion on soil compaction. This is a conversation about soil compaction on the Petura seed farm. I'll back up a little bit. In 2017, 2018, 2019, we noticed in our fields on the drier years, a reduced yield potential on the headlands of our specifically soybean fields. And that got us thinking, what's going on? Why are these yields less? Ultimately, the conclusion we arrived at was in heavy clay soils where compaction is highest, our plants are accessing the least amount of moisture possible. So then the question arose in the fall of 2019, what do we need to do to our land in order to get our roots to penetrate that soil surface quicker, earlier, faster, and access more moisture in the soil profile? And that was obviously addressing our compaction concern. Therefore, we purchased a ripper, headed out to the field, and this is what we saw. Here's some quick snapshots, snapshots, apologies, snapshots. That's a millennial talking for you. Snapshots of what we saw in the field. And if you look at my cursor over the picture on the left, here's a soil structure that is actually lifted from the soil, subsoil out. And that's anywhere from uh, 12 to 18 inches thick, this chunk of soil that comes out. And where that chunk of soil came from was actually from beneath the track of a headland uh, underneath a sprayer. And that's a headland that would have had four passes with the sprayer that year. And so it's just a great visual to see as the sprayer travels over the land, packs that soil structure tight together, squishes the air out, just how compacted it is, how big of a lump it comes up. And essentially it gives you a great visual on how the heck do roots actually penetrate through that and access the moisture. Not to mention this is in an area of a field that was uh, poor soil drainage, high salts and high calcium. So it's really got a lot working against it, but it's just a great visual. And so there's also what we figured two different types of compaction going on in your field. I talked about the deep penetration of compaction from underneath large heavy equipment. This other type of compaction is what uh, a lot of uh, extension uh, soil researchers would call uh, a hard pen. So we've cultivated our soil for years, anywhere from three to five, six inches deep. And underneath that point of compaction, the soil never gets disturbed or broken up from any mechanical structure. And so because of that, when we agitate, disrupt the soil in the form of tillage, a structure breaks up that is anywhere from uh, three to six inches in thickness. And that's the other type of soil structure compaction we are seeing when we sent the subsoil across the land in 2019. So I'm gonna jump ahead to the next slide. And what these three videos are is a quick visual to show exactly what the subsoiler is doing as it crosses the land. We're going anywhere from 12 to 16 inches, 16 inches deep in these videos. Take a look. This is so slow that the wind is faster than this, as you'll see dust flying by. So bear with me, it's coming. So we've got the disc making a slit for where the shank is going to be coming. And there's the shank as it lifts from anywhere from 12 to 14 inches and then drops it back down as you get that soil fracturing. Actually, the one thing we notice the drier your soil profile, the better job of soil fracturing, the more you can feel break up under your feet as the subsoiler goes past you. And here's another one. And this, what this slow motion um, video is gonna show you is as the subsoiler goes across a track in the field, whether it be a cedar, a combine, a grain cart, you can see each shank trip as it goes across the track, which is where the soil is taking more force to break up those clumps. And if you watch, because we're going across on a 45 degree angle of the field, you can actually see each shank trip simultaneously across the machine as it crosses the track. Take a look.
not to mention the nice sounds that it makes. It reminds me of my grandma's chimes on her deck and veranda on a nice summer day. And it's an equally good sound when it's disrupting soil compaction. See, there's the first trip. There's the second trip, the third shank, the fourth shank as it goes across that combine track or that grain cart track all the way across your machine. And there's your track that I was referring to. It's just a great visual of what's taking place underneath the soil that we can't see. So let's jump ahead because this is what we saw in our trial on our field in the summer of 2020. Keep in mind, subsoiled fall of 2019, super dry. Then we got super wet the monsoon season came, snowstorms came, we all remember the nightmares. Filled that soil profile back up with moisture. This spring we planted soybeans into it. On this field, what I'm gonna show you is a series of NDVI imageries throughout the summer. I believe there's eight of them coming from June all the way to August. And what this NDVI imagery is showing you is the difference in the vegetation index in the field, the percentage of difference. On this field, we subsoiled 290 acres out of 320. June 14th, NDVI imagery. June 19th, something's starting to show up down here, exactly where we did not subsoil. This is where the 20 acre chunk is that we did not subsoil. Keep an eye on it and the rest of the field. June 29th, if vegetation is increasing quickly. Our rows are getting close to being filled in on 20 inch rows and it's showing up in the satellite imagery. July 9th, July 14th, even to a higher degree of difference compared to the rest of the field. June 24th, June 29th, when soybeans are sucking almost the max amount of moisture out of our soil, our days are the hottest, and it is showing the difference in vegetation all through the summer. So the question is, does that translate into yield? August 3rd, August 8th, the story continues. Here's some pictures from the field. What I want to highlight here is on this headland, subsoil this headland, did not sub, and there's the line where we did not subsoil. It was a difference of the rows closing in anywhere from seven to 10 days, depending on the field. Okay, here's another picture of a field. This is from that trial, from those NDVI imagery, where we subsoiled, where we didn't. Difference in row closure timing. And here's a picture of harvest, most important. On your right of the screen is where we did not subsoil. On the left, we did. Obvious difference, height, four to five inches more height where we subsoiled. The other one is more even consistent maturity. When we harvested this, this was 10% moisture where we subsoiled. This was 14 to 15% soybeans where it was not sub subsoiled. What that tells me is some plants are more aggressive rooting than others. And some plants were able to access moisture, but others were forfeiting and dying off. Whereas over here, all plants were able to access more moisture more evenly. So that's what we saw above the ground. Now, the real question we should be asking ourselves is what are we seeing below ground? So let's take a look. This is how we measured it. We used soil moisture probes. We put soil moisture probes into the ground where we subsoiled and where we did not. What I wanna highlight here is the results of each. What I want you to pay attention in this slide, and there's a lot going on. On each probe, we have a sensor at 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, 50 centimeters, 70 centimeters, and 100 centimeters down. And what it's doing is measuring the percent of change of saturation. Why is that important? That tells us where the roots are in the soil profile and where the roots are pulling moisture out of the soil profile. And so what you're seeing is the wetting and drying effect when we add rain versus take moisture out of the soil profile. So the two things I wanna highlight, and I just wanna pull my notes out so I get this accurate. Rooting depth, at 20 centimeters deep, we saw our roots where we subsoiled access moisture seven days earlier than where we did not subsoil. That's huge. Seven days early June, longest days of the year. That's so critical for soybeans to get growing early and produce vegetation. Seven days earlier, we were pulling moisture from 20 centimeters down. 
Then at 30 centimeters and 50 centimeters, we are pulling moisture from three to four days earlier down. So 30, 50 centimeters down, three to four days earlier where we subsoiled. And what's more important is when we get down to 70 centimeters down into the soil profile. So we're talking about three feet. Our roots were down there seven days earlier than where we wouldn't, did not subsoil. Why is that important? Yeah, that's important because from August 1st to August 15th is a crucial period of water uptake with soybeans. That's when our soybeans are putting moisture into yield. Side note, one inch of moisture is needed to produce five bushels of soybeans at this stage. So having more moisture available to the plant in those time periods is so crucial to yield development and seed size development. And where we subsoiled, we had roots down there seven days earlier accessing that moisture in heavy clay soils. So what you can see is as you go from 60% moisture saturation down to 20 and 30% subsoil maturation, that's going from saturated to almost impossible for our plants to pull water out of heavy clay soils. So that's what I wanna highlight here. And then the results, the most important thing at the end of the day, the thing that keeps clothes on your back and a check in your pocket. There it is. Where we subsoiled, we saw a 17% increase in yield weight. And when I corrected those yield weights to even moistures, to 13% moisture content, that equated to a 23% yield increase or a 7.8 bushel an acre gain. I'll give you a minute to digest because that's what I needed when I saw this difference. It was absolutely outstanding. But when we think about what we've just talked through, the NDVI imagery, the roots down low, it makes sense. It makes sense why we can get an eight bushel gain. The other thing I wanna highlight is do not expect an eight bushel gain every single year. I don't expect it. I think this is in the top end of yield increase. I think reality, two to four bushel an acre on soybeans is, is a increase that is realistic. But the reason why we got such an increased yield was because we went from super wet, saturated, to super dry through the growing season. And so it was the right equation to produce a significant increase in yield. So that's our results from our subsoil and trialing. Please stay tuned for the results from this trial coming in year two, in year three, year, year four. This trial is not over. This has only told the story in one year. In order for us to truly have confidence in if subsoiling is the right practice for our farm in this dry period, we need to measure it year two, year three, year four. So we're gonna be following this exact same cycle, or exact same trial for the next canola crop, uh, sorry, oat crop, canola crop, and wheat crop. So stay tuned for results, uh, appreciate your attention, and uh, hope this helped you out in thinking about getting your roots accessing moisture throughout the growing season. Don't forget, start to the seed. <laughs>